Welcome to Time of Death. This video is for informational purposes and in no way meant to glorify or condone violence. In today's video, we'll be discussing the murders of William Charles McKillian Jr., who was shot and killed in the 600 block of Westminster Avenue in Venice, and Richard Manuel Juarez, who was shot and killed in the 2000 block of Virginia Avenue in Santa Monica on the same day, according to LA County Coroner Records. Taj Martin, Patrick Birdsong, Norman Cole, and Sean Murmur were subsequently arrested and charged with Juarez's murder. Taj Martin was also charged with McKillian's murder. The following is the evidence at trial. On the morning of November 3rd, 2009, defendant Taj Martin, a member of the Venice Shoreline Crips in the Venice area of Los Angeles, learned that his friend and fellow Venice Shoreline Crip gang member, victim William Charles McKillian Jr., had been associating and regularly staying with Martin's ex-girlfriend, Miss Miller with whom defendant Martin had broken up about a month earlier. Defendant Martin called the female cousin of victim McKillian who lived next door to Miss Miller, asking why she hadn't told him that McKillian and Miss Miller had been messing around. Sometime around 2 p.m., victim McKillian called defendant Martin on a cell phone borrowed from his cousin and was overheard saying, hey cuz, where you at? At about 3.30 p.m., victim McKillian again called defendant Martin on the phone borrowed from another cousin, apparently upset, saying, you told me to come down here, I'm here. Where are you? Victim McKillian returned the phone and walked toward the area of 7th and Broadway near Oakwood Park in Venice. A few minutes later, his cousin heard gunshots. McKillian was shot and killed in a nearby alley. On the witness's tip, the police recovered the murder weapon from a dumpster a few doors away. They found no fingerprints on the gun, and the DNA they recovered from it could not be linked conclusively to defendant Martin. A few witnesses testified, with various degrees of uncertainty, to their observations of a man of various descriptions looking into the dumpster and running through the alley. Soon after the killing, word spread among local residents and friends that Santa Monica 13, a Mexican street gang, was responsible for killing McKillian. McKillian's cousin, who had heard of the nearby shooting and knew that defendant Martin and McKillian were close friends, texted defendant Martin's phone from the site of the shooting about 15 minutes later, asking if he was okay. Defendant Martin's only response was why. Shortly before 9 p.m. on the evening of November 3rd, victim Richard Juarez and Richard De La Cruz had been sitting on a bench in Virginia Avenue Park in Santa Monica with companions Chloe McCarthy and Ashley Rodriguez. De La Cruz belonged to Santa Monica 13. Juarez belonged to a gang in another territory but was associated with De La Cruz and the Santa Monica 13 gang. One or two African-American men approached the group, one wearing a hooded gray sweatshirt over a red striped shirt, the other a black sweatshirt. One had a black beanie hat. One of the men fired several shots, killing victim Juarez. Witnesses heard about eight or more gunshots and multiple muscle flashes were visible on a dashboard video recorded on the police car parked nearby on Pico Boulevard. After the shooting stopped, two men were seen running from the park south across Pico Boulevard toward 22nd Street one wearing a black sweatshirt and the other wearing a gray zip-up hooded sweatshirt. One was wearing a black beanie cap. A police officer who was parked nearby on Pico Boulevard heard the shots, saw the men running, and followed them in his car. When he turned onto 22nd Street, he could no longer see the men he had followed, but saw a car parked with its headlights on. When the car pulled away as he shunned the spotlight on it, the officer followed and stopped the car. After a backup officer arrived, he detained the driver and passenger. Defendants Cole and Murmur. About 10 minutes later, a police dog pulled defendant Birdsong from under a parked van in a residential backyard on 22nd Street, near where defendant Cole and Murmur had been parked. The police later found defendant Martin hiding under a tarp in a residential garage on 21st Street. He was wearing a white t-shirt, jeans, red shoes, but no sweatshirt. The police found two abandoned handguns nearby, one with a silver barrel matching the description of the weapon used by one of the shooters. They also found a black beanie hat and a dark hooded sweatshirt in the corner of the yard and a gray sweatshirt under a car parked on 21st Street. DNA testing linked the beanie cap and the black sweatshirt to defendant Birdsong, with defendant Murmur as a minor contributor to the DNA on the cap. Gunshot residue was found on defendant Martin and Birdsong, indicating their recent contact or close proximity to a gun that had been fired. A search of the car revealed a cell phone registered to defendant Martin, with DNA connecting him to it. Another phone found in the car was registered to defendant Murmur's mother at an address in Lancaster. Defendant Bursong's fingerprints were on Murmur's phone and on the car's front and rear passenger doors. 
Defendants Martin, Birdsong, Cole, and Murmur were charged with the murder of Juarez and the attempted murder of De La Cruz, Rodriguez, and McCarthy, including gun and gang allegations. A separate information filed seven months later charged defendant Martin with McKillian's murder. The prosecution's theory was that the four defendants were members of the Venice Shoreline Crips, that members of that gang believed wrongly that the rival Santa Monica 13 was responsible for killing McKillian, a fellow Venice Shoreline Crip gang member. That after McKillian's killing, defendant Martin communicated with defendant Murmur in Lancaster. That defendants Cole and Murmur then drove from Lancaster to Venice, picked up defendant Martin in Venice, and then drove defendant Martin and Burson to Virginia Avenue Park in Santa Monica 13 territory. That defendants Martin and Burson approached and shot at the group in the park, killing Juarez and attempting to kill De La Cruz and their two companions, while defendants Murmur and Cole waited in the car nearby and that the four defendants committed the Virginia Avenue Park shooting for the benefit of the Venice Shoreline Crips in retaliation for McKillian's murder earlier that day in Venice Shoreline Crip territory. Following a six-week consolidated trial of defendant Martin for the shooting of McKillian and of all four defendants for the charges arising from the Virginia Avenue Park shootings, the jury acquitted defendant Martin of the murder of McKillian. All four defendants were convicted of the first-degree murder of Juarez and the attempted murder of De La Cruz. The jury acquitted defendants Cole and Murmur of the attempted murders of Rodriguez and McCarthy and was unable to reach a verdict on those charges as to defendant Martin and Burson. Defendants were each sentenced for the murder of Juarez to 50 years to life in prison. For the attempted murder of De La Cruz, defendant Martin and Burson were each sentenced to a consecutive term of life in prison plus 25 years. For the attempted murder convictions, defendant Cole and Murmur were sentenced to life in prison plus 25 years. William Charles McKillian Jr. was 19 years old at the time of death. Richard Manuel Juarez was 20 years old at the time of death. 